Well, folks, we're going to talk a few minutes here at PH Tidbits about discouragement. Encouragement comes uh, when we trust in the loving and fear God. That's when we have encouragement. Discouragement is when we do the opposite. We leave God out of the picture. We leave the Lord out of everything we do. We go our own way and we come to a place of discouragement. But the forgiveness of a loving God will take you from discouragement to encouragement. And you find that in the Word of God. What is the Word of God? The Word of God is the Bible. I prefer a King James Version, which I believe is not strayed from the original text that we need it. So, I encourage people to get a King James Version. A discouraged person cannot realize goodness. He can't realize it if it struck him in the face. He can't realize goodness if it struck him in the face because he is discouraged. And the only thing that will fortify and strengthen him is a faith in God to take him to solve his problems. Now, I, I was in the place at the place of a three-time uh, attempt of suicide before I got saved. I probably was the one of the top, one of the most discouraged human beings that ever lived on the earth in my alcoholic days. And uh, I, it took a, a great act of God to take me from it rather than killing me on the road. He just woke me up. You see, as it was with Moses, the Bible said, Moses is a man that was in the Old Testament who got discouraged. And he, he was out there on the desert and, and uh, he killed a man and he got discouraged and the Lord said to him I'm going to banish you over into the wilderness for 40 years and you think about it and get this behind you so I, I will be with thee the Lord said I will not fail thee nor forsake thee be strong and of good courage this is what the Lord said and he said this in Joshua 1 5 and 6 he said it to Joshua Joshua's fixing to go out to a battle. And here he is. He's going to be battling the enemy of God, the devil's foes. And as he does it, God said, Hey, keep your mind stayed on me, keep your heart on me, and I will deliver you. And he will deliver you from discouragement. And I'm going to here to tell you today, he delivered me in one split second. And it was over with. Why art thou cast down on my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? And then he goes on to say in Psalm 42 and 11, Hope thou in the Lord. This is why we get, look, David was a man after God's own heart, but there was times when he allowed the flesh to come in, trusted in himself, and he got in this place to where he said he was cast down. He, was, he felt like he was, his soul was in trouble. He had an empty void. He got separated in his own self from God and tried his own way. Caused him great grief. It said, Why art thou cast down on my soul? And then in Psalm 118 and 5, I called upon the Lord in distress, and the Lord answered me and set me in a large place. <laughs> you know what a large place is? A place of freedom. A large place is a place of freedom. If you should be behind bars today in a four by six cell and you feel like you're captive, you can be in a place of freedom with the Lord in your heart and in your mind and in your soul. You could be in a coal mine in a cave in and be down there and say, there's probably no hope in this life for this body to live much longer but you can be in a place of freedom by saying I know if I die right now I go and be with the Lord forever in heaven and that would be a place of freedom so we walk by faith not by sight cast down in indignations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring unto capture every thought into the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Casting down all of those things that were in the past. Casting down all of those imaginations that we 
we ourselves don't tell me nothing fella I already know wow you don't know as much as you think you do because you're gonna live in discouragement with that kind of attitude by the way I don't care where you are who it is talking you know the Bible said you can watch a fool and learn something from him if it's learning how just not to act foolish but you watch that fool you can learn something from him and you might learn something wise I had a fella come and help me paint one day now, this guy was not a real painter he, he wasn't a professional kind of paint but he did a little trick with his paintbrush and I watched him that day and I learned it and I've used it just about nearly every day since in painting that one little trick that guy used that's something in it if you'll be open-minded instead of judging those around you look at them with this statement in your mind and in your heart what can I learn from him what can I learn from him what can I learn from him that takes the condemnation out of looking at a person. What can you learn from him? So there's an old sour, bitter woman right there in front of you, and you know she's sour and bitter. Say, what can I learn from her? Well, one thing you can learn from her is not be sour and bitter. <laughs> if you judge her, then you're taking her place, and you're being sour and bitter toward her. So don't be sour and bitter. Pray for her and say, you know, I might could drop a word on her or two and help her out of this situation. Look, <clears throat> be careful. Be careful. Everything is, is going to fall down to being captivated by Christ, having your alliance in Christ, and having your obedience in Christ. Then you'll have perfect peace and happiness. Every hour of every day it can be. But you've got to stay there. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Listen to this. He said, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. We have a day in America we call Thanksgiving Day. We feed our faces and gouge our bodies with more than we should eat on any day in our life, and we become uh, uh, gluttons on that day. We should be gluttons of the Holy Spirit. We should be gluttons of Jesus Christ. We should be, He will fill us to the place to where when we close our eyes at night, we only see light. He will fill us to the place where darkness is not part of our life, where our life is light. So be careful for nothing but in everything. Give pray and supplication. Thanksgiving in everything. We have a Thanksgiving day. I'm a Christian that follows Christ. I have a Thanksgiving every single day of my life that I'm following Christ. The only time I wouldn't have a Thanksgiving is if I wasn't thanking Christ. So there's the one, not last but least, not least but last, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering without wavering for he is faithful to do that which he promised and and that's Hebrews 10 23 he is going to do that which he promised and that is he's going to take us through to the other side when Jesus told those disciples he said we're going to the other side they struck out in the boat he was sleeping down there in the boat a great storm come up you rock these wind blowing and, and blowing them over and everything and Jesus down there sleeping. And what did he say? They went and woke him up. He said, Jesus, we're going to perish. This boat's going to sink. And Jesus said, oh, you little faith. Didn't I tell you we were going to the other side? <laughs> and we do that. We get little faith. Sometimes we take a giant faith and we squeeze it to a little bitty thing. So let's use all the faith that we were delivered. First Peter 5, 7. Cast all, A-L-L, -L, all your cares upon him. A little bitty word, all. For he careth for you. He careth for us. We have Jesus on our side, King of kings, Lord of lords. Hey, the only potentate. That means he was master of the universe. He came on the earth. He was the potentate. He was the 
a master of the universe, came on the earth, walked around for 33 years, the last three years, gave his life to walking across the country, giving an example for you and I to do. And when he left, he sent 12 men out that turned into 56 men real quick, and then in the hundreds real quick. And so he sent those 12, and then 120. When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, that's the deal. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, saying, God, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart. Save my soul. I have passed my time again. This is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. Supposed to stop at 10 minutes, and I'm at 10.30.